In these videos, I use chemicals that can cause burns and respiratory problems. If you are to replicate any of the experiments or procedures shown in my videos, please do so in a fume hood or outside, and please wear suitable gloves when handling acids. Hello everyone, and welcome to my channel. In this series of gold recovery videos, I will be recovering the gold from this e-waste that I have purchased from eBay. I have spent the equivalent of 2 grams of gold to see if I can recover more than I spent on the material. I'll be honest. I think it is a big ask as I find the e-waste on eBay to be overinflated in price, but I'll give it a go anyway. I've purchased a good mixture of materials, including RAM sticks, motherboards, slot cards, and cell phone boards. For a little bit of fun, why not drop a comment down below and have a guess at how much gold can be recovered? I'm going to be optimistic and guess 2.1 grams. I think I'll start by removing the fingers from the boards and the ram sticks. I can break these off quite quickly and get them soaking while I carry on with something else. I'll do the fingers separately to the other boards, such as the cell phone boards, as there is no solder to deal with with the fingers. It's just gold plated onto copper. With the other boards, there will be tin, lead, and other metals to deal with to remove the foils. I just snap them off with a pair of pliers and throw them into this plastic tub. I won't be using nitric acid on them as it would cost too much for the little amount of gold that's on them. The gold plating on these ram fingers and on most other boards is only around 50 to 60 micro inches thick, so I don't think I'll be making my two grams back from the fingers and boards. I'm hoping to get it back from the microchips though. I'll carry on and remove them off camera. It will only take me 10 minutes, and I'll be back with you. After 10 minutes, they're all broken off and in the tub. I weighed them, and they weigh out at 55 grams. That is a very small amount, but it's a start. The reagents I'm using for this process are acetic acid, which is more commonly known as vinegar, sodium chloride, which is more commonly known as table salt, and hydrogen peroxide which can be bought as a disinfectant. I have made a video previously about using these reagents that talks about the process in a little more detail. I'll leave a link in the description to that video if you want to check it out. I'll set these aside to react over the next few days, and I'll make a start on the processors and gold corner BGA chips. I have 10 of these Pentium processors, and I have 12 of these gold corner BGA chips. I'll do these separately to the other chips, as there are no legs to deal with, and once they are removed, there will be no solder to deal with either. To remove the chips, I don't use any fancy equipment. I use a cheap heat gun and a little patience. The chips just need heating enough to melt the solder underneath, and they drop right off. And here it is, the first chip. The part I'm interested in is this black part here. This is the epoxy that holds the gold bond wires in place. This is a zoomed-in image of a processor without the epoxy surrounding the bond wires. As you can see, the wires are extremely thin. The next thing I need to do is remove the heatsink. The heatsink prevents the chip from overheating, so it needs to get quite hot to liquefy the solder beneath it. Once hot enough, I'm able to remove it with a scraper. Now that the heat sink has been removed, it makes it a bit easier to get to the epoxy center. I like to do this while the processor is still hot, as it is a lot easier to bend when hot. And here it is. If you look in the top corner, you can see the bond wires where the epoxy has broken. The wires run all through the epoxy, so you need to make sure to get as much off the processor as you can. The bond wires even run into the corners like on this piece here, so make sure to gather every last piece. I've removed all of the Pentium processors and the gold corner BGA chips. I've separated the BGA tops from the green fibers by peeling them off with a pair of pliers, and they're now ready to be incinerated. Due to there being a small amount of chips, I am able to incinerate them with a blowtorch. All of the epoxy and ceramic needs to be incinerated from the chips 
to expose the bond wires. You need to ensure the chips are burned all the way through. The epoxy should be white when you are finished. Any resin that remains around the bond wires could prevent the acid from coming into contact with the wires, preventing the gold from being dissolved. The chips should be glowing red under the heat to ensure the chip is burned throughout. The whole incineration took around 15 minutes to make sure they were done. Once burned, they crumble very easily. Once the chips have been incinerated, they need to be crushed to free the gold. For this I use a pestle and mortar. A fine mesh screen, I believe this one is 70 mesh. And a bowl to catch the material. I do this in small batches. There's no point trying to do it all in one go. It just makes it more difficult to crush everything and ends up taking longer. Everything needs to be crushed down until it fits through the screen. Anything that doesn't fit gets put back into the pestle and crushed again. Some gold corner BGA chips have internal heat sinks. They're usually made from copper. They can be discarded, but first, have a little check to make sure there is no ceramic or epoxy stuck to them, which may contain some gold. Once everything is crushed to a fine powder, I can start the washing process. Washing the material has a few benefits. Firstly, it reduces the amount of material, which in turn reduces the amount of acid needed to cover the material. Secondly, it removes all of the small particles that don't contain gold that can clog up filters and cause problems when filtering. And thirdly, too much material could cause your chlorooric acid to get trapped, which could result in a loss of gold. When the water is first added, the material will tend to float on the surface. I find that giving it a little spray with water and leaving it to stand for 10 minutes allows it to settle to the bottom of the jug. To wash the material, just add water and mix, allow it to stand for 20 seconds, and then pour half into a bucket. Then repeat. By doing this, all the heavy material has time to settle at the bottom of the jug, so there is no chance of pouring it out. Gold is 19 times heavier than water, so it sinks to the bottom quite quickly. All of the lighter material is suspended in the water and gets poured out. None of this material will be gold, it will be the crushed ceramic and epoxy resin. This will take a few washes. A little while later, only the heavy material remains. This material will sink to the bottom in around 10 seconds, and the water will be relatively clear. I'll take it outside and make a start on recovering the gold. Here, I'm adding around 30 milliliters of homemade nitric acid. I want to see if there's any silver, copper, or any other base metal that could get in the way of dissolving the gold. I'll leave it to sit, and if I get any reaction, I'll put it on some heat. The reaction has started. This suggests that there is something in the material that is not gold. It will most likely be copper. I'll put the jug up on some heat and allow it to react. The solution has been on low heat for around five minutes. It's producing nitrogen dioxide gas, suggesting the nitric acid is reacting with something in there. I'll leave it to react until no more nitrogen dioxide is produced and the bubbling stops. After the reaction had finished, the solution was allowed to cool. The color of the filtrate suggests there was a little copper in the material. I'll give it a couple of rinses with distilled water, and it will be ready to start dissolving the gold. I'm using distilled water in case there is any silver in the solution. Adding hydrochloric acid to silver nitrate will precipitate silver chloride and could cause problems. Here I'm using hydrochloric acid and potassium nitrate to dissolve the gold. It's sometimes known as poor man's aqua regia, as potassium nitrate is a lot cheaper than nitric acid. It does the same job, 
So for recovery, I'd rather save the money, and when I've got a lot to refine, I'll use nitric acid, just to reduce the chance of impurities. I'll give it all a mix, and then set the hot plate to a low heat. It's not necessary to boil the solution, but a little heat helps the reaction. After warming for five minutes, the reaction is underway. Nitrogen dioxide gas is produced during the reaction. This is why I'm doing it outside. I also have a watch glass over the jug to contain some of the nitrogen dioxide. This will cause the gas to condense on the watch glass and create a small amount of free nitric acid, which will save on reagents. With the reaction complete and the solution cooled down, I'll do a quick stannous chloride test to make sure I have gold in solution. I'm looking for a nice dark stain. And here it is. The dark stain is an indication of gold in solution. Here, I'm filtering the solution with a cotton filter. A good clean filtration produces good clean gold. I'll rinse the material a few times until the solution runs clear. Again, I'm using distilled water for the rinses. I'm rinsing the material to ensure I get every last drop of the chlorooric solution, and the water also helps with the gold precipitation. Gold precipitates better from a dilute solution. With the filtration complete, I'm going to be using sodium metabisulfite to precipitate the gold. Sodium metabisulfite, or sodium pyrosulfite, is an inorganic compound. It is used as a disinfectant, antioxidant, and preservative agent. When the sodium metabisulfite comes into contact with the acid, it produces sulfur dioxide gas. Sulfur dioxide is the reducing agent for the precipitation of gold. The solution goes from yellow to clear and then to brown. The brown color is the fine gold powder dropping out of the solution. Here, you can see it floating on the surface of the solution. I'll allow it to settle overnight, and in the morning, I'll clean it, dry it, and get a weight. The first weight of the series is here, and it comes in at a massive 0.6 grams. That's not bad from 75 grams worth of chips. Being over the quarter mark off the first few chips is quite promising. If we do a little maths, we can calculate that you could recover 8 grams of gold from 1 kilogram of this type of chips. I'll leave it there for part 1. I'm going to get all these boards stripped and sorted ready for part 2. I've got all the chips, pins and boards to get 1.4 grams from. If you think it's possible, give the video a thumbs up or leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to stay updated on this eBay e-waste experiment, and I'll see you in the next video.